Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends. Today we have eight new cards spoiled for Magic Origins, and we also have a few cards that have already been spoiled, but we're getting a first look at their actual Magic Origins artwork, or we're seeing a different version of their artwork. So let's just jump in, and we're going to start off by looking at Jace Vrine's Prodigy. Now, this has already been spoiled. We talked at length about this card last week, so if you're interested in hearing more about it, definitely check out our Magic Origins playlist. But for right now, I just wanted to show you guys the art and what it's going to look like. When this was originally spoiled, it was a leak, and it came from the San Diego Comic-Con promo version of this card, which kind of has that black and white and blue sort of coloring to it. It has different artwork on it, so I wanted to be able to let you see the real card and what it's going to look like. And the art is beautiful. It's maybe one of the best things about the card. I really like what they've done with both the front side and here's the Planeswalker side, which just looks really amazing. Uh, we're not really familiar with his homeland, but you know, looking the, at the background of the Planeswalker side, you see Ravnica. It's just really cool stuff. So nice card. Nice job with the art on this. All right, and the next card I wanted to show you, which has previously been spoiled, is Honored High Arc, and this is actually the Clash Pack version of the card. The Clash Pack is going to feature Honored High Arc, and it's actually going to feature a couple cards from Dragons of Tarkir, so I didn't put those up here since they're cards you're very familiar with. But uh, we talked about this one yesterday, so I won't go into any more detail, but I just want to show you the art. Having said that, let's get into the new stuff. And I have about three cards I wanted to show you, and then we're going to look at a cycle. And the first card is Kytheon's Irregulars. And this is a limited bomb. I love this card. It's two white, two colorless. It's 4-3. It's got Renown 1. Okay, that's fine. But what I'm really interested in, you pay two white, tap target creature. And notice you don't have to tap this card. So as long as you have white mana in multiples of two, you can tap as much as you want on the board. This is pretty awesome. Obviously, it's better in the more white you're playing. If you're playing a mono-white deck or mostly white deck, it's going to be bonkers. But even if you're playing half and half white in another color or even splashing white, and you can only tap out on one thing, this is still pretty awesome. And once it gets in there, it becomes a 5-4. So very economically costed for its size. It has the ability to kind of control the battlefields. Just really love this card. So obviously it is a limited bomb. I don't know if it's going to see play in standard just because I don't know if there's a white deck out there that's really looking for something like this. This is a controlling card but it kind of complements having a lot of other creatures on the board as well, which right now there isn't a deck like that in the metagame. Not to say it's not powerful enough for Constructed in a different environment, but I just don't know if you're going to see it at this point. It's also going to be a strong card for cubes, I think, and Commander. Speaking of Commander, our next card is Jace's Sanctum, and this is really cool for Commander decks. Cost 4, it's an enchantment, and it's basically, basically instant sorcery spells cost 1 less colorless mana to cast, and whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, you get to scry 1. So, that's incredible. I mean, that scry is so powerful. In a game of Commander where you're tossing around a lot of spells, you're never going to have to worry about getting bad draws or getting mana flooded or anything like that because you can keep scrying. This is going to be amazing in a multiplayer type environment. Having said that, it's not going to be quite as good, say, in Limited, unless you happen to just have a pool with a whole lot of instant sorceries. Maybe you're playing some sort of prowess deck might be okay and something like that but for the most part you're probably not going to play it a lot in limited uh and i don't really see it being a thing unfortunately in standard or even modern just because it costs four to cast and it's kind of lets your opponent time walk you because you're taking a turn off to cast this now you get great benefit from it as it goes but again it's also contingent upon you drawing more instants and sorceries and you can't always take that risk especially in a fast-paced environment like modern but even so in standard so it's a really cool card definitely has its place uh, even if it isn't in standard Next is Mana Gorger Hydra. I like this one a lot too. This is a 1 1. It's got trample, and whenever a player casts a spell, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. There you have it. So, the only problem with this card is it's very weak when it comes into play. It comes into play as a 1 1. So, your opponent now has to deal with this. Now, if they don't deal with it, it's going to run away and take over the game, and you're probably going to win. But this is going to be a lightning rod. It's going to be a lightning rod for even one 
damage spells or minus one minus one abilities they're gonna do whatever they can do to get rid of this thing before it gets too big now once it has a chance to grow a little bit it's very dangerous it's gonna be very tough to deal with let's talk about a limited this is a limited bomb it's gonna be fantastic it forces your opponent to find a removal spell commander or any multiplayer situation this thing's gonna run wild it might even make you a target it's that good and as far as the other constructed formats go when you look at things like modern you look at things like standard i see some possibility here this almost feels like a fixed tarmogoyf for me now the reason it's not as good as tarmogoyf obviously it costs one more and on top of that tarmogoyf a lot of times has the chance to come into play already pretty big comes in as a three four or four five and it's harder to get rid of this has to come in as a one one maybe if you're lucky on the same turn you can make it a two two but it doesn't have that ability to kind of automatically protect itself against small direct damage spells like Tarmogoyf has. But if your opponent doesn't find an answer, it kind of runs away with the game sort of like Tarmogoyf does. So I don't think it's going to replace Tarmogoyf, obviously, in Modern. That's going to be the card you're going to use. But in Standard, there might be some decks that try to get value out of it. It'd be very interesting to see if this makes a splash or not in some green decks. Now, we'll, we're on to the cycle I promised you guys, and this is a common cycle, and we see one of each of the five colors, and this is a very interesting cycle. I'm not sure how I feel about it. The, well, let's look at the first card, and I'll kind of explain what's going on here. So this one's basically a grizzly bear with upside, so that's not a horrible thing in limited. You pay two, you get a two-two, and then if you have additional copies of this that come into play you'll gain life off the previous copies. So you put the first one in, and then when the second one comes into play, you gain two life. If they're both still on the battlefield, you put a third one into play, now you're gaining four life. It's kind of cool that they change. So where is this useful? It's obviously not useful in singleton formats like Commander. It's obviously not strong enough for standard or modern play or anything like that. Probably not fantastic in sealed, although a grizzly bear can be fine, but in sealed you're probably not going to find a pool with a whole lot of multiples of these things. So this whole cycle is really based around draft, which I find interesting and kind of neat. I mean, draft is a very popular format, and you're going to go into a draft and maybe you can pick up four or five copies of these for a deck, and the more you have, the better these cards are. Now, the downside is you might start drafting these and someone else might start drafting these and a card like this is not that great if you only have one or two copies in your deck. But if you have four or five, it starts to become a lot better. So, very interesting thing they did. Let's look at the next card in the cycle. This one, I like this one even better, Fairy Miscreant. And this is a flying man, but for every additional one that comes into play, you get to draw a card. Again, very nice card. Flying man's not horrible and limited and especially if there's an ability like draw a card attached to it. Now again, if you have two of these in your deck, it's not going to be all that great for you. But if you had four or five, could be decent. It's going to give you some card draw. You get some, some evasion in the air. Maybe even a chump blocker if you need it. Very interesting card. Next one is Undead Servant. In this one, you get a little bit of a bigger body, but you're paying four for it. It's a 3-2, and this is a zombie, and it makes zombies, which maybe better than some of the other cards we've already looked at just because there does seem to be a zombies matters themes here so when he comes into play he's a three two and he checks the graveyard your graveyard to see if there's any other copies of undead servant if there are for each one you get a two two black zombie so it does give you a lot of advantage if you do have copies already in your graveyard and it's a three two so it's the type of card that even though it costs four you could bash in and your opponent's going to feel a little awkward about maybe blocking it and killing it and putting it in your graveyard especially if it's a trade so this one not bad again it's going to be much much better in multiples and you want to get probably at least three four of these before you really want to think about playing it in limited but it's not horrible next is infectious bloodlust this is a aura it costs two and you guys know how I feel about auras. I'm not super thrilled with them. But this one does give you a little bit of a safety net against being two for one. Again, if you have multiple copies of it. So it gives the creature plus two plus one haste, forces it to attack each turn. That's fine. When it dies, though, you get to go ahead and search your library for another copy of this card and put it in your hand. It eliminates the two for one as long as you have a copy to search up. Now this one I could see playing even if you had maybe 
only two or three copies in your deck. Obviously, you don't want to fill your deck with auras anyway. This gets better in smaller numbers than maybe some of these other ones do. Uh, it's not a horrible card. Again, it just depends on how many of these you end up picking up in the draft. And now for the last card of the day and the last card of the cycle, and it is Timber Pack Wolf. This one, I think I like the best out of the, all the other cards in the cycle. It costs two for a choo-choo, so you got a grizzly bear there. However, it feels like Muscle Sliver. For every additional copy of this that's in play, each other copy gets plus one, plus one. So if you get two in play, it's a two, three, threes. If you get three in play, it's three, four, fours. And it just kind of grows. Kind of like Muscle Sliver can do if you ever played against that. Even in Limited, it can get kind of out of hand sometimes. So I really do like this one a lot. I think the only thing you do have to be wary about is this is probably the best out of this cycle in other players may try to draft this against you because i think it could be that good if you ever played against muscle sliver even in a limited environment where your opponent had two or three copies of it it can get kind of annoying so this is decent and it's a mechanic that's kind of already been proven to be pretty powerful and limited so having said that those are all the cards for today we'll continue with spoiler videos every day the new spoilers come out and of course we should be getting more tomorrow so as always thanks for watching please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day hey thanks as always for watching if you're still looking for quality magic the gathering videos click on one of these annotations and if you had not had a chance yet to subscribe smash that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the breaking mtg news spoilers set reviews crazy product openings or gameplay videos on heroes and legends mtg talk to you again soon and have a great day